Hello, welcome to Fun Cars and Good People. I'm Carl, and this is the cold start of BMW E90 M3. The cold start process is autonomous and fully managed by the engine control unit, as known as the ECU or DME. It will take about one minute to complete. In the meantime, here's the outline of this video. First, I'm going to talk about why cold start can be troublesome and how cold start delete can benefit. Second, I will tell you about the tools required for cold start delete and how to set them up. Thirdly, let's read the original DME program, followed by using the modification tool to make changes. And at last, flashing the modified program back to the DME. So now, you can skip to section 1, or continue to see the end of the cold start progress. After about 1 minute, the RPM will drop to around 600 RPM and stabilize. Okay, so that is the cold start of a stock E9X M3 on the S65 engines. The cold start program doesn't happen to me every time. Usually I have this when I start the car every 2 or 3 days when the car is really cooled down. But some people happen to have this cold start program even when the car is hot. The cold start program is designed to warm up the catalyzer more quickly by injecting a lot of fuel, increasing the engine speed, so you can achieve lower emission in shorter time. For some people, this is kind of a rough idle and uh, it is scary with the fluctuating engine speed and crazy loud noise. The engine is rattling like an earthquake and sometimes even the rough idle will make my engine stall. This just looks abnormal for any car drivers. For people who has an exhaust modification with a reduced catalyzer or even catalyst exhaust, that is going to be crazy, crazy loud. And if you happen to uh, go up in the early morning, your neighborhood is going to hate you. In addition to the rough idle and crazy loud noise, uh, I often get uh, check engine lights with this cold start program. The check engine light even comes during the start of the car. So that makes people wonder uh, if my engine is having some kind of problem. And if you plug in the computer and see the codes, you will see misfiring of multiple cylinders, misfiring from cylinders one to eight, you are going to have uh, around 8 to 10 fault codes regarding uh, the misfiring of the engine. But the engine is still normal, it drives normally, nothing strange uh, is happening. After some time of driving, the fault code will go away, and after some time, the fault codes will come back. So that is another annoying issue uh, for the M3 drivers. You don't want to see the check engine light on the dashboard. So the engineers do what the regulation requires. I think we have nothing to blame then. So some people go to the tuners to modify their ECU, the engine control unit, or on BMWs, the DME, digital motoring unit, to take out the cold start program. So after we take out the cold start program, there will be no crazy fluctuation of the engine speed, no crazily loud exhaust noise, just stabilized idle like all normal cars. There will be no more check engine lights, no more codes about misfiring 
after the code start delete. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the code start delete by yourself with this uh, OBD2 to USB uh, cable and a laptop and some specific uh, software tools. Let's start the work right away. Here are the items we have to prepare. First and most important of all, a contingency plan. Please keep in mind that if things go wrong in this work, the DME will be bricked and the car will not start. So please make sure to back up all data and make sure your car is located somewhere towing service can reach. Or make sure you know where to send the DME module for repair. The worst case is the DME being permanently bricked and must be replaced, which is going to cost a lot of fortune. So please carefully follow all instructions, think twice before the move. As you see in the photo, this happened to me in another project in 2020. I will tell you the story in a future video. The keywords are MDM, M drive, M dynamic mode, M button retrofit. In addition to the contingency plan, we further need a special OBD2 to USB cable for flashing, a laptop with Microsoft Windows, the software tools, MSS6X flasher, and MSS60 binary modification tool, and a car battery charger. The estimated time for this work is around 75 to 100 minutes you will spend most of the time reading the DME. There are a lot of OBD2 to USB cables on the market, which are often referred to as DCAN or K plus DCAN cable for BMWs. But according to naM3forum.com, some of them have uh, defects in communications which will damage the DME when we write or flash data. So a correct cable should be used for this work. The one on the left side is the one I purchased for E9X and E6X flashing, which we are going to use in this DIY. And the one on the right hand side is the common K plus DCAN cable that I have been using for coding and diagnostics. Both of these two cables work for ISTA and NCS expert, and I really cannot tell the difference between them. So please see the links below to buy the correct OBD2 to USB cable for the cold start delete. This one from ECU Works cost £37.50, pence, while Beamer Geeks also offer one costing cents. After I ordered the cable from ECU Works, they sent me an email including links for downloading all the software tools associated with this cable. You can find useful tools for diagnostics such as IMPA and Rheingold ISTA, encoding and programming tools such as NCS via the provided links. The driver of the cable is included in the disk image ECU Works V3, but it is an older version, which still runs. Let's use a smarter method to configure. The Windows driver for the cable should be automatically installed once you plug it into the USB port. If the driver is not installed automatically, just go to the chip maker's website, ftdchip.com slash drivers, VCP drivers, and scroll down to find the one for your machine. I need the one for Windows 10 64-bit. This video was made in February 2023 and the latest version for Windows 10 is 2.12.36. Download the driver and extract to anywhere you like. At the device manager, find the USB serial port, choose updated driver, and direct the location of the extracted driver files. Windows should do the rest of the job. So in this example, I updated the driver to the latest version 2.12.36. But this is not required. The previous versions also worked for me. The cable is actually a serial COM to USB adapter. Use Device Manager to find it. Right click on this adapter from Properties, Advanced Setting, set COM port number to COM1. 
and also set latency timer to 1 millisecond. Your magic cable is ready to work. The software tools are operated under Windows. The only system requirement is .NET Framework 4.5. Usually we don't have to worry about this, but if you want to confirm the version, please use the link in the description. I'm using a Windows 10 laptop in this demonstration, and I just went straight with it. Maybe other virtual machines can work, so if you succeeded on other platforms, you are very welcome to share your experiences in the comments below. We are using the freeware MSS6X Flasher provided by NAM3Foreign.com to read and write the DME. Please download via the official post on the forum. I'm using version 1.0.3 in this video. The flasher also does some complicated encryption and decryption jobs. Please also carefully read and follow the instructions. Another guide is also available on ECUWorks page. Unzip the download to any location you like. There will be three files in the folder and MSS6X flasher is one we will run later. After reading the DME, the data will be saved in the same folder and will be named to your VIN. The flasher needs some application library to use the cable and read the car. Download the MSS6X flasher prerequisites, unzip to your C drive. The correct folder structure should be C backslash ADFS ECU and two files 10 flash.prg and ms underscore s65.prg should be located in this folder. If you are previously using IMPA, NCS Expert, or Ryan Gold Istar to communicate with the E9X M3 already, you can just run the flasher. But if your computer is fresh to this, make sure these libraries are correctly installed. The MSS60 binary modification tool is provided by ECU Works and is used to make the changes in the flash, composed of a program and tune that we read out from the DME. Download the tool via the download page of ecuworks.co.uk or via the link in the email they sent. This is a standalone executable, no installation required. The download and modification is free of charge, so you can try out all the parameters, but saving the changes is paid. One program modification for each VIN is £75 sterling, and there is also an option for unlimited VINs which cost £400 sterling. I will show you the purchase later in this video. The flashing process requires the system voltage to maintain at or above 13.0 volt. Fluctuation in the voltage or battery drain can interrupt data transfer and break the DME. This is the same for coding and programming work. So a battery charger, especially a professional one, is strongly recommended. For your information, the readout takes about 45 to 60 minutes where flashing takes about 10 to 20 minutes. The period is short compared to the service at the workshop. Once I did a readout and flashing without the charger and succeeded, but this is risky. Please be warned. First connect to the positive lead, then the negative lead. Connect to the computer and connect to connect to the OBD2 port. Then switch on to ignition and turns of the headlight, the air conditioner, and the lights to save the car battery. The following sections are the walkthrough of the cold start delete. First, we are going to do a full read of the stock DME, back up the stock flash, 
Secondly, remove the cold start procedure from the readout. Thirdly, use the stock flash to unlock the DME. And at last, flash the DME with the modified flash. I believe you have fully read the official instructions on nam3forums.com and EC Works. Let's start now. And please kindly correct me if I'm wrong. Run MSS 6X flasher you just unzipped. First press the Identify DME button to establish communication with the car. The flasher will show the information it obtained from the DME on the left side. Always note the DME status, although it is in German, which should be Normal Betrieb, which means normal and ready. Read the full flash of the DME which consists of the program and tune. This process took around 50 minutes for me. When the full read is done, the data is saved in a folder named to the last 7 digits of your bin. There are two bin files, the full read and the tune. Their format is Galeto V54 and you will be prompted later in the MSS60 binary modification tool. Remember to back them up securely. Next, read the ISN or secret key of the DME via the advanced menu. This action takes less than one minute and is not required for flashing. It is just a safety measure to back up important data. The secret key is stored in the same location as the full read. Run MSS60 binary modification tool. Browse to the full read you have just saved, which is the bin file with size of a 5,120 kilobyte. You will be prompted about the format. It is in Galeto V54, so click No. The features of the current program are shown on the panels. Let's take a quick look. On the top row is the loaded binary information. The second row is the revolution limit per gear. The third row is a rev limit based on engine temperature. On the tabs below are the options that can be changed. Among them is the cold start delete that we are interested in today. There are other adjustments for throttle accelerator and power steering. The performance tuning part takes additional charge and license. Well, I'm good with the condition of my M3, so let's focus on co-star delete at this moment. I will make another video about me messing with the rest of the options. Now simply tick the option box to disable co-star. Press apply changes. We have to further write changes or save changes to a new bin file. A paid license is required to continue. From the action menu, click Generate License Request. Click OK to generate a new license request. Then enter your full name and email in the pop-up. The license will be tied to the computer and cannot be transferred, so please carefully decide your working computer. Select your desired license type and click Generate License Request. The request key is automatically memorized in the background and sent to ECU Works via the internet. Saving the key is optional. I chose the unlimited license and pressed the Buy Now button. You will be directed to the PayPal page. Please check if all payment information is correct because refund is not possible. Here I chose to pay in pounds sterling to avoid extra charge for currency conversion. The amount can be significant so be careful with it. When all is set, click Pay Now. Normally, in a few minutes, you will receive the activation key. If not in 15 minutes, check the spam junk mailbox and send ECU Works an email regarding the license request. Now, open the email containing the activation key, copy the key and go back to the application. Close the license request prompt. From the action menu, click Activate License, paste the super long string you've just copied, then click Activate license. The application will restart and now your VIN is licensed. Load the full read bin file again. Click Code Start Delete. Apply changes and write changes. The tool will automatically add a modified string to the original file name. 
Save the modified flash to a desired destination. The modification is done. You can close the MSS60 modification tool now. We will have fun with it in the near future. The DME is protected against aftermarket programs. The RSA bypass unlocks the DME, so it then accepts any flash. This process requires a full read of a stock DME and uses it for unlocking. You only have to do this for the first time use. Let's go back to the MSS6S flasher. Load the original full read bin file. Click RSA bypass via the advanced menu. For my case, I have my DME tuned before this work. The application saw that the flash is not stuck and refused RSA bypass. The DME is already RSA bypassed, so I can go on and flash the modified program. So if you have an aftermarket DME tune, consult experts before flashing by yourself. I see some folks who have an aftermarket tune program the DME back to original with WinKFP to have a stock flash, then do the RSA bypass as instructed. This way ensures clean work with the DME. But in any case, you can still read out the flash to see what's inside. There's minimal risk in just reading the DME. According to the official instructions, RSA bypass will take around 15 to 20 minutes. After this is done, you will be prompted to flash the DME. Load the modified pin file you've just saved. On the right bottom are two buttons for flashing the tune and program. Since the flasher will erase all the data, remember to flash both the tune and program to the DME. I click flash program first. It took about 8 minutes. When this is done, note the DME status showing Daten nicht vorhanden oder nicht vor or data not available or not full in German. The progress bar also prompts to flash tune to finish. Then click flash tune. It took less than one minute. Pretty fast, right? Now you see the DME status says Normal Betrieb or normal and ready in German. And tune flash success on the progress bar. The DME flashing is done. You can leave the application now. During the DME flashing, you will see check engine light and several warnings popping up on the instrument panel. If you plug in the diagnostic tool, you will find that they are associated with dynamic stability control. But don't worry, they can normally be cleared. Run IMPA or ISTAR or any other diagnostic tools and clear all the fault codes. And that's all for the code start lead. Now the co-star will be like this. The engine speed stabilizes around 6 to 800 RPM right away. No crazy fluctuation, no crazy loud noise, and no more misfiring codes. Sweet! It is still unclear how the co-star process is related to misfiring, but the delete is indeed an effective solution. Eagle. So that's all for the CoStar Delete DIY of the S65 engines on all E9X M3s. With the CoStar Delete, I never get the four codes about misfiring anymore. And when I start my car in the early morning, I no longer feel embarrassed or guilty. Please see the description for purchasing the correct OBD2 cable the MSS flasher and the binary modification tool. If you have any comments or questions, you are very welcome to leave the comment uh, down below. See you next time. Eagle.